This video will take you through a number of abnormal chest x-rays. Specifically, we're going to apply our simple, systematic, but still detailed approach that we introduced in the first video and help you train your eyes to recognize pathology. I strongly recommend that you watch part one before watching this, or at bare minimum, watch the abbreviated four minute video that outlines our approach to the frontal and lateral chest x-ray. We're gonna cover the most common things that you'll see and give you some clinical pearls. And after watching this video and some practice, there's really no reason why you can't become as good as a seasoned radiologist at recognizing and diagnosing these bread and butter common pathologies. Let's get started. For each of these cases, we're only gonna pause for a few seconds before going through each case. So feel free to pause on the image, have a look on your own, and then press play. Okay, in going through our approach, there are no lines and tubes here. The heart and mediastinum are clearly shifted towards the right. When we look at the lungs and compare both sides, you notice that the left side is extremely lucent. And you'll also notice that there are absent lung markings in the majority of the left hemithorax and a collapsed left lung. These findings are in keeping with a tension pneumothorax. So we have a pneumothorax here on the left, aka air in the pleural space, with the collapse of the lung itself, and there's evidence of tension with pressure buildup causing mediastinal shift to the right, and you'll notice widening of these ribs. Tension pneumothorax, as you likely know, is an emergency because these patients become hypotensive and it's treated with needle decompression. This is something that should probably be picked up clinically and you rarely see chest x-rays that are this severe, uh, but if you do, you need to pick up the phone and call the referring physician immediately. When you're imaging a pneumothorax, which again means air in the pleural space, you can do expiratory views to make the pneumothoraces look bigger and bring them out and make them more obvious. So on the left here, we have a normal inspiratory view, and you may not have noticed, but there's a pneumothorax here on the right. So you have air between the visceral pleura that outlines the lung and the parietal pleura, which is on the chest wall. In order to make a diagnosis of pneumothorax, you really only need to see two things. You need to follow two rules. You wanna see a pleural line, and you want to see absent lung markings distal or peripheral to that pleural line. On the right side here we have our expiratory views and the pneumothorax is much more obvious. So again you have the pleural line and absent lung markings peripheral to it uh, but the uh, pneumothorax is much more obvious. So again a pneumothorax is just air in the pleural cavity and in order to diagnose a pneumothorax, you must see a pleural line and then absent lung markings peripherally. If you follow these two rules when diagnosing a pneumothorax, there's really no reason why you can't diagnose pneumothoraces as well as a radiologist. So here's our test. Patient A, is this a pneumothorax? Okay, yes it is. You have a pleural line, you have lung markings here, and you have no lung markings peripheral to that line. Patient B, is this a pneumothorax? Okay, you have lung markings medially, you have a line, and then peripherally, you still have lung markings. We have a skin fold that is mimicking a pneumothorax. Essentially, this is just a fold in the patient's soft tissues that creates this artificial line that's mimicking a pneumothorax. Okay, case two, 40-year-old female with fever and shortness of breath. Okay, so let's go through our full approach here. So heart, mediastinum are okay, no shift, no abnormal contours, there's some calcification in the aorta. Lungs comparing both sides, clearly something very abnormal here in the right lung. Zigzagging up both sides, remembering the retrocardiac, retrodiaphragmatic uh, as well. No pleural effusions or pneumothoraces on each side, no free air. Soft tissues and bones are okay. Checkpoints, apices, hyla, retrocardiac, retrodiaphragmatic are okay. So the main abnormality is here. On the lateral film, retrosternal airspace is clear anteriorly, but there is something that's abnormal here that is actually this entire region here. Spine sign is okay. Retrocardiac is okay. No pleural effusion. 
and the hyla is partially obscured by this abnormality here. So how would we describe this abnormality? So this is a confluent, fluffy, cloud-like opacity here in the right lung. It happens to be in the right upper lobe. When we use the words fluffy, cloud-like, and confluent, we're describing a consolidation. So this is consolidation in the right lung. So what is a consolidation? So here's this schematic of a distal bronchus and several alveoli and the interstitial space surrounding the alveoli. We're not going to get into the detailed anatomy of a secondary pulmonary lobule because we're not talking about CT here. Let's keep it simple for now. Consolidation refers to airspace disease. Something is filling the alveoli and creating this fluffy cloud-like opacity on the chest x-ray. So what's filling the alveoli? It can be filled with anything. So if it's pus, it's called a pneumonia. If it's blood, you're dealing with pulmonary hemorrhage. If it's fluid, it's pulmonary edema. And if it's cancer cells, it's cancer. So there's nothing specific about a consolidation. It could be anything filling the alveoli. But most commonly in the emergency department, we're seeing acute patients who have either infection or hemorrhage. So you're most commonly going to be seeing pneumonias and pulmonary hemorrhages. If it's chronic and doesn't go away, you need to get worried about things like cancers or other chronic inflammatory consolidations like eosinophilic pneumonia and organizing pneumonia. But don't worry about that for now. For now, know what consolidation means, what it looks like, and you're most commonly seeing it with pneumonias. Let's look at another example. So here again, we have this fluffy cloud-like opacity in the right lung. This is a consolidation. This patient happened to have pneumonia. You're also going to notice on this patient, there are branch-like lucencies that are going through this area of consolidation. So this is what people are referring to when they use the term air bronchogram. These are just normal airways that are branching through a bunch of alveoli that are filled with disease, in this case, pneumonia. The couple things you need to know about air bronchograms are, one, people use the term when they're talking about consolidations, aka airspace disease, and two, when you see air bronchograms, it means that the airways proximal to those bronchograms are patent, aka they're not obstructed. But other than that, it's just something that we see commonly with airspace disease or consolidation. Here's another case. Okay, so if you go through your approach, heart, mediastinum, looking at the lungs, comparing both sides, you notice this cloud-like fluffy opacity here on the right. On the lateral, retrosternal airspace is clear, retrocardiac airspace is clear, spine sign going down, 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 down. Instead of getting darker as you're going inferiorly, clearly there is something there that's abnormal. So the spine sign is abnormal, suggesting airspace disease here in the right lower lobe. This is another case of pneumonia. So figuring out which lobe the consolidation is in in a patient with fever who comes to the emergency department with a cough is not that important at this stage. If it's a pneumonia, it's a pneumonia, you're going to treat it. But if a patient then has a follow-up study and you can confidently say that it's the same thing that hasn't disappeared, a non-resolving opacity can be concerning for something like cancer or a chronic inflammatory process. So that's where it potentially can become important. So it's worth it to know how to figure out what lobe the consolidation is in. Very briefly, another sign that people commonly refer to when talking about consolidation is the silhouette sign. The silhouette sign refers to loss of a normal border when an adjacent lung disease obscures it. So for example, if we have this white circle here that makes borders with a black surrounding tissue, for example, white circle representing the heart, black area representing the lungs. If you have disease in the actual lung that is touching the heart at that location, you're going to lose that normal heart border. If that's not clear, let's look at an example. This is a normal chest x-ray. Look at what the normal left heart border looks like. It's very crisp. You have a border between heart and dark lung. This is an example of a fluffy consolidation in the left lung. You notice that the left heart border is lost at that location. 
the left heart border at that location is silhouetted. So other than knowing that this is a consolidation and a pneumonia likely in this clinical setting, we also know that this is in the lingula because the lingula is the part of the lung that contacts the left heart border at this location. As mentioned, the silhouette sign can help us figure out which part of the lung the consolidation or airspace disease is in. If the right heart border is silhouetted or you lose that border, you're dealing with a right middle lobe pathology. The right diaphragm with a right lower lobe pathology. The left heart border, as we just saw, the lingula is involved. And if the left diaphragm is silhouetted, the left lower lobe is the lung that's involved. If you don't have the silhouette sign, how do you figure out where it is in the lung? Well, you need to know your lung anatomy. So the right lung is separated into three lobes, the upper, middle, and lower lobe. The left lung into two, the upper and lower lobe. The lingula is part of the upper lobe on the left. Again, if you're just starting out, this is not that important. If there's a consolidation and it's a pneumonia, you're going to treat the pneumonia, but it's worth trying to figure out where it is. In order to confidently localize an opacity, you're going to need the frontal and lateral chest x-ray because there's a lot of overlap of the upper and lower lobes on the frontal film. So here we have the right upper lobe, which is above the horizontal fissure on the right and anterior to the oblique fissure on the lateral. The right middle lobe is anterior to the oblique fissure on the lateral and below the horizontal fissure. And the right lower lobe is posterior to the oblique fissure on the lateral. And again, as you can see, something up here on the frontal could very well be in the superior segment of the lower lobe here. So again, you need both the frontal and lateral to localize exactly where something is. On the left, the left upper lobe is anterior to the oblique fissure on the lateral. And again, can be seen anywhere in the lung here. Again, the lingula is part of the upper lobe on the left. And the left lower lobe is posterior to the oblique fissure on the lateral. And again, can be quite high if it's in the superior segment of the lower lobe. Okay, last case in this section. Okay, so let's go through our approach. The heart and mediastinum are okay. There's no shift comparing both sides in the lung. and zigzagging up both lung. So this is a more subtle abnormality, but you can really pick it up when you compare both sides. There's clearly an opacity here on the left lung that is cloud-like and confluent. On the lateral film, retrosternal airspace is okay, retrocardiac space, spine sign is normal, no pleural effusion, and looking at the hyla, you notice that there is increased density in general here, anterior to the fissure, and here in the left lung, this is in the left upper lobe. This is a left upper lobe pneumonia that's a little bit more subtle than the other ones we showed you. Okay, case three. 55-year-old male with previous cardiac disease presents with shortness of breath, and a chest x-ray is performed. So have a look at this chest x-ray. Again, pause the video and take a detailed look before proceeding. All right, let's go through our approach. So the heart is too big. The cardiothoracic ratio is above 0 0.55. Comparing the lungs, there's no consolidation or nodules. But you will notice there are too many lines here. There are also is evidence of parabronchial cuffing and there's haziness of the vasculature here. This is a case of pulmonary edema. Let's go through these findings in more detail and what they mean. So if you didn't realize that there were too many lines in the lungs, let's go through what we talked about in our first video. So I like to separate the lungs into thirds. So on the right here, we have a normal chest x-ray, medial third, middle third, and lateral third. The normal lines from vasculature should decrease as you move out. In the peripheral third, you should have very little or no lines. If you look at our abnormal case or the case that we just looked at, you can see that there are too many lines, and peripherally here, we have way too many lines. So there's a reticular abnormality in the lungs. You'll also notice that there is thickening of the tissue around these bronchi. This is parabronchial thickening, which essentially is edema around the bronchi. And to look at these a little closer here, we have these septal lines. People refer to these as curly B lines. 
indistinct vasculature, and peribronchial cuffing. So to take a step back, we already talked about what a consolidation is. We see fluffy, cloud-like opacity as an x-ray, and all it means is that we're filling the alveoli or the alveoli are filled with some sort of disease. We most commonly see it with pneumonia and hemorrhage in the acute setting. Another pattern of disease that we just saw is interstitial disease, and that's going to cause a reticular pattern on x-ray. So instead of filling the alveoli with abnormality, we have an abnormality involving the interstitium itself. In the acute setting, you're most commonly going to see this in pulmonary edema. You have fluid leaking into the interstitium that's going to thicken it, and you get pulmonary edema. In the chronic setting, you're most commonly going to see it with pulmonary fibrosis. When you see reticular thickening or septal thickening on CT, there's a whole other differential. But for now, let's keep it simple to these two more common pathologies. When we talk about pulmonary edema in CHF, we generally have three discrete stages that we discuss on chest x-ray. Stage one is the most subtle. We have vascular redistribution. And that's something that's often overcalled by readers who are first starting out. So what is vascular redistribution? Well, if a patient is standing up, the vessels that are more gravity dependent, aka lower in the lung, are going to look more engorged. When you have redistribution because of increased pulmonary pressures, you end up having vessels that are in the upper lung that are just as big or more engorged than usual. If a patient is supine, you can't call vascular redistribution. If you just have questionable vascular redistribution on its own and nothing else, you probably shouldn't call it. Stage two is what we see most commonly, and that is interstitial edema, and that's like the case we just showed you. So there's a reticular pattern of abnormality in the lungs, as well as vascular redistribution, and oftentimes peribronchial cuffing. That's edema or fluid in the interstitium. When it gets even more severe and the interstitium is overwhelmed with fluid, fluid starts to pour into the alveoli, and you get frank consolidation. That's more severe pulmonary edema. Okay, another case here. So in this case, uh, heart and mediastinum are okay. Looking at both of the lungs here, there are clearly too many lines in both of these lungs. And you'll notice in the lower lobes, it's very coarse. There's also a decreased volume in both lungs. And when we compare it to the prior study performed a year ago, it looked exactly the same. The heart is not big as well. So this is an example of chronic reticular lung disease. This is a patient who had idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Okay, next case. We've seen this case before, so we'll go through it quickly. Heart, mediastinum, looking at the lungs, comparing both sides, and zigzagging up both lungs to look for something more subtle. No pleural effusion or pneumothorax, soft tissues, bones, abdomen are okay. Checkpoints, maybe some scarring in the apices, hyla are okay. Nothing behind the heart, nothing behind the diaphragms. You probably notice this nodular abnormality in the right upper lung. So we're showing this case to contrast from our other cases. We showed you an example of consolidation first, or several examples of consolidation first. Uh, we showed you a few examples of interstitial disease, an example of pulmonary edema, and an example of pulmonary fibrosis. And now we're showing you an example of a pulmonary nodule. So this patient's in the clinic, it's a routine chest x-ray, what are you going to do next? So what's the differential for this? Um, well, you can have nodular appearing infectious abnormality or uh, patchy consolidation that can look nodular that is in fact infectious. So this patient's coming in with fever, cough, and typical symptoms of pneumonia, and this is new or acute. This may be infection. Um, but the diagnosis that requires exclusion here is that of a lung cancer. When, you're, when we talk about the differentials of nodular opacities, there are both malignant and benign etiologies, and this requires further investigation. What's the next investigation? Uh, generally, we would do a CT scan in this situation. Again, if there are symptoms of infection, it may be reasonable to have a short interval follow-up to ensure that it resolves after the patient's treated for a potential pneumonia. Uh, but this is not something that you would just call a pneumonia and leave. It either requires short interval follow-up or a CT. 
So this patient had a CT and you can see that there is a pulmonary nodule here that has speculated margins and looks very suspicious for malignancy. The patient also has emphysema in the lungs. They're a smoker um, and this is very concerning. This was biopsied and ended up being cancer.